If you have a vegetation or algae growth problem in your pond, then you need to get that water moving. Hey, this is Brian from Y2KOK, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a pond fountain for less than $200. Manufactured fountains look fantastic, but come at a price of no less than $2,000. And with how much I need to fix in this pond, I didn't want to spend most of my budget on a fountain. A fountain is going to help move the water around in the pond and offer some aeration as well. Not to mention, it will visually improve the look of the pond. This video will give a quick overview of what you will need and where to get it from. I've also included some of the mistakes and changes I made along the way. So let's check it out. To make this fountain, you are gonna need a $1 rope from the Dollar Tree, $12 in PVC from a hardware store, a $10 40 gallon barrel and make sure it's food grade, $4 for a project bucket from Menards or Home Depot, $20 in closed cell spray foam. You can get that at Menards as well. $125 sump pump, and a $5 extension cord protector. And all in, you're going to be in less than $200. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So before I started, I needed to know, is this actually going to work? This is a half horsepower Flowtech Floodmate 6000, and it does. It does move a lot of water. So now that I had that tested out, it was time to move to the next step. All right, so here's one thing I didn't mention was the extension cord. I would recommend a 12-gauge uh, cord depending on how far you're going to run it. Then here is the uh, e extension cord cover. This is going to be used in conjunction with your extension cord and your sump pump wire. Sump pump wires are only so long, uh, probably six feet long on average. You'll stick them inside of this, you'll plug them together, and then you'll close it and snap it. So these are fantastic. I've not had any issues out of mine uh, at the moment. Every time I open it up, it's nice and dry. This is the um, part that's going to go on to your sump pump um, that's how the pipe is connecting to it that goes on to an inch and a quarter uh, pvc pipe there i'm then using uh, this fitting here to go from an uh, inch and a inch and a quarter to an inch and a half then i'm going from an inch and a half to two inches i'm going to put a two inch piece of pvc in there then i'm going to cap it with the cap i'm actually going to drill into it this was one of my first changes i made I did not like how it actually sprayed the spray pattern. I didn't uh, make it in a way that I liked it. So I'm gonna say stick around and check out what I actually did after this. All right, so here's where we take our 45 gallon food grade bucket and we're gonna start cutting it down. Uh, truth be told, I did cut too far uh, down on this. Uh, later on, I actually went back and cut a little bit more off just because I had way too much sticking down and was impeding the water uh, from making it into the inner bucket. So uh, what I'm doing here, I just we drew a line around it uh, to give us a nice straight, uh, straight cut line there using that circular saw and just kind of going all the way around. Uh, makes it a super easy way to uh, cut, cut that barrel down to size. All right, so next up, we're actually drilling holes in our project bucket, basic five gallon bucket from Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, all of them sell them for about $4. Uh, we didn't know how many we would actually need in this, so we just kind of started putting them in there. Uh, truth be told, we needed a lot more in there, and we ended up putting some bigger size holes in there so that we wouldn't cavitate the pump. Basically, the pump was running out of water, so at a later time, we had to come back and add more. All right, at this point, we're gonna drill a hole in the top of our blue bucket, and what that's gonna allow us to do is access everything once the pump is put together. So because this uh, green bucket here is actually going to be the support for the sump pump, we have to have a way to access and clean and change out different things once the pump is assembled. So uh, right now we're measuring around uh, the blue bucket. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it out with a marker so it gives us a nice I even cut all the way around. Uh, that gives me an, you know, lines to follow as I'm using uh, the saw there. So now I'm using a jigsaw to cut the top of the blue uh, 45 gallon barrel out. And it doesn't look like it's going too smooth there, but I promise you I go back through and, and smooth everything out and cut along that line that we took the time to trace. All right, so this is the point in which we add the spray foam. And one thing I'd like to note here, that this is great stuff, 
pond and stone version and it is a closed cell foam and what that means is it's not going to collect water or absorb water like the open cell foam that they sell pretty much every other version of it that they have is an open cell foam this is more expensive than the other versions but it's well worth it because you're going to get to spray it once and be done another thing i'll tell you is that in between the green bucket and the blue bucket i did put down a plastic trash bag and the reason for this was to ensure that none of this great stuff actually went in between them and um, and stayed where it was supposed to stay. I'll go back and remove that plastic bag later. It's just, it was very easy to pull out. But just wanted to note that uh, the buoyancy of this stuff is fantastic. I used three cans, probably could have used one and a half and it had been more than enough. The way it's currently sitting is it's gonna be sitting up out of the water a good six to eight inches and I did not want it sitting up that high so I actually went back and removed some of the foam after we tested this out so just so you know use no more than two cans for this current setup and use a bag to make sure that it doesn't flow out onto the floor and also try to make sure that you spray it evenly around it that way your your fountain doesn't want to go sideways when it's floating so now we're going to drill a hole in the center of the of the cap itself this is after we've already glued the cap using pvc glue to the um the two inch pvc pipe uh, the reason we're doing this is this is a quarter inch drill bit uh, honestly i should have gone with a bigger drill bit at first but i thought this would be big enough and it turns out it, it wasn't um, However, it just honestly depends on what the look of your, um, what you want your fountain to be. Ultimately, at the end of this, I did not really care much for this particular head and ended up doing a second head, and uh, I'll show that later in the video. But this one is basically just using drill bits on the center, and then I'll go through with a grinder and grind out the sides a little bit as well. All right, so at this point, we're back out at the pond and we're ready to start testing out the first head. One thing I do want to mention is you're going to need a GFI because more than likely your uh, wall outlet you're using outside is not attached to one and you definitely don't want to um, have something happen while you're in the pond or you don't want to kill your fish. So that's one thing. Then also I wanted to show you again the uh, electric cord cover. I've got the sump pump attached in there. I've got... Um, the electric uh, extension cord attached as well it's completely sealed up looks great uh, and keeps everything nice and tight so I'm gonna set everything down and go get the bucket and bring it out and we're gonna set it down in there and see how uh, everything fits together so now that we have everything together we turn it on and we notice it surges up and then pretty quickly starts losing water pressure so this is a problem of not having enough holes in our bucket so that's what we're gonna take care of next, and then we'll bring it back and try again. All right, so at this point, you can see we've added the bigger holes into the green project bucket. We also took the time to go ahead and spray paint the blue bucket as well. One thing I will note is you're gonna to wanna to have a spray paint that is going to adhere to plastic, just not a normal spray paint. That'll make sure that it stays on longer. If you don't, it's gonna just kind of scratch off fairly easy. But anyway, so from the top, we actually went through, drilled four additional holes and are running the string from the dollar store there through each hole. This just gives us a nice steady way to um, keep our fountain balanced in the center. We actually tried using bricks and that was extremely hard to get correct. So balancing it from the top, basically holding it in place, gives us a nice, easy way to center the fountain and uh, can allow us to get in there and access it to clean it once it needs to be cleaned. All right, so here we are at test one. You can see that we do have a little bit of rocking back and forth. A lot of that has to do with how far out the fountain is floating on top of the water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for a second head because we weren't super pleased with how this one looked. Uh, and then also we're gonna cut some of the spray foam out. So instead of going with the three full cans like we did, 
We're gonna try to reduce it down to what two full cans of spray foam would look like. That way it can set down in the water and we'll try out the second head as well. So here we are, we're gonna start working on cap two. This is actually a three inch cap. What I'm doing here is I just took a Sharpie to be able to draw some lines where I wanted to cut. So the main idea here is to have a full circle cut. However, you can't make a full circle in a PVC pipe or else you're just gonna have a, a hole, right? So you've gotta make a couple of gaps. I chose to do three large lines around the outside and then I wanna go on the inside of those lines and make three smaller lines as well. And yes, I know they're not perfect. They're, I could have done this definitely a, a little bit nicer. However, when it comes to actually cutting and grinding the holes out, I'm gonna be doing that by hand too. So this is just gonna be a decent guide for me. So you'll notice that the lines overlap each other and that's on purpose. That way you have a solid stream of water coming in, uh, or excuse me, coming out and headed back in. So that's really the main purpose here. So you can see just kind of a, a good idea from the top here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it all at once. And um, that way you've got a full ring of water coming out. And some from some of the professional fountains, that's the way they typically do the circular fountain head as well. So now I'm gonna use my rotary tool with an extension and it's just gonna make it so much easier than trying to hold that rotary tool by hand. It's a lot less bulky, it's easier to maneuver. And so you can just do your jobs tremendously easier. So if you have access to one of these, I definitely recommend it. Go through, cut all those out. Then once you get done, go back through and really try to uh, knock a lot of those pieces off. Here you can see that I've I've pretty much done what I can do with this. I'm getting ready to switch over to a sander and then we'll finish it out and attach everything to it. All right, so here we are. This is the final step. I've attached the PVC pipe to the cap. I went ahead and spray painted it so it'd look a little bit nicer. That way it matches everything else that's black. Took it some more foam out so it would sink a little bit further and uh, touched up a couple of other things. There you can actually see the cinder blocks I'm using as anchors as well. So here we go, let's throw it out in the pond, see how it looks. All right, here we are. These are the results of head number two for our homemade fountain for under $200. I'm honestly extremely happy with how this turned out. I'm more than likely going to make another one and uh, put it on the other side of the pond. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some ideas on how you could possibly make one. If you do have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message here or drop uh, a comment below and I'll try to answer them. Have a great day.